Hi there, my name is Connor Wilson, and I sincerely apologize for what I'm about to show your eyeballs. Now, I'm not normally a creative person, but when I do have ideas, they're usually extremely out there and extremely cursed. And cursed images and memes are seemingly ingrained into our culture nowadays, can you agree? So what's a few more of those? Throughout this presentation, I'll bestow upon you all the atrocities that I've committed. We'll start off tame with the side of the more artistic stuff that I've done over the years for classes and such, uh, but then we'll get into the Big Mac of this Happy Meal from Hell with some of the more obscure memes that I've made, and finish it off with the excruciating taste of a McDonald's Sprite. Of course, I'm talking about my friend's faces plastered on the Avengers. Are you hungry yet? Savor it. It won't last long. To start off with some background, I first learned how to use Photoshop in my point-and-shoot photography class in my senior year of high school. I needed to take another elective course, and point-and-shoot photography seemed like the perfect choice. Hey, photography's always been that pretty interesting to me, I'll give that a shot. Photoshop's a pretty good skill to learn in this day and age, so let's give that a shot. As these thoughts ran through my head, I was only semi-aware of the little shoto fop gremlin on my shoulder whispering sweet nothings into my ear. You can make so many cursed images, the production of memes will be yours to control. The class ended up being pretty fun, for me at least. You could tell a lot of people in there weren't interested in photography or Photoshop or putting effort into anything that wasn't Fortnite. As you can expect of a high school class, the curriculum was based on the art side of Photoshop more than my side. Which was helpful nonetheless, and that brings us to some of our first works of art. So this kind of picture is known as a diptych in the world of photography, in, of which the formal definition according to digitalphotographyschool.com is a picture or series of pictures as an altarpiece painted or carved on two hinged tablets, or a work made up of two matching parts. So it's basically just two pictures that fit together in some way. For this work in particular, I was trying to show the contrast between my attitude when I was doing the stuff that I like to do, in this case, play guitar and wear comfortable clothes, and the stuff that I didn't like to do, which was my job and homework. You know, the typical unga bunga work bad mindset. I still haven't grown out of that. I was pretty proud of this when I made it. I thought it was pretty creative, considering most examples of diptychs and triptychs we were shown were usually just lapses in time or pictures taken in succession. Now whenever I think about it, I, all I can think about is this gap between the two pictures of what my face looks like, monstrously stretched between them. Another one of our assignments for this class was to make art that was surrealist in nature. This time the examples we had to work with were things by Salvador Dali, Rene Magritte, and Max Ernst, to name a few. However, my mind went to a collection of artists that I was pretty into at the time, and that was the vaporwave culture. If you're unfamiliar with Vaporwave, soundontime.com has a really great article on what the music is made up of and what the aesthetic looks like. A quote from the article that I think sums it all up pretty well is, Vaporwave is about nostalgia. Nostalgia for lo-fi analog technology, nostalgia for the early internet. Therefore, a lot of the art that comes out of this community usually has an outdated element to it. A hazy VHS filter, an original Game Boy, Windows 95, Greek statues for some reason. The point is, I was inspired by all of those aspects, and I wanted to create a piece of art of my own which ended up being this. There's really no joke here, I just thought it was important to show this stage of my growth in learning these skills. I'm actually still pretty proud of this one. I managed to distort a picture of clouds to make the hazy VHS filter that I got here. That was all just a little teaser of what's to come. Trust me, you haven't seen anything yet. Once my senior year started to draw to a close, I started to apply some of these skills that I've learned in class to my own outside projects. Memes, really. Fair warning, the pictures I'm about to show are all inside jokes, so they're really not funny out of context, as if they were funny in the first place. One such inside joke spawned when my friends and I were playing Dungeons & Dragons when we came upon a rock. For those of you who don't know what a rock is, it's this giant bird monster. Obviously, this led into jokes about Dwayne The Rock Johnson. For those of you who don't know, Dwayne Johnson is a former wrestler and current actor. Logically, this led to jokes about Dwayne The Rock Rock Lobster Johnson. For those of you who don't know, no, I'm, I'm done. One more. For those of you who don't know, Harag is one of our D&D characters infamous for wielding a gun. Like I said, not funny. I've also happened to make a ton of memes about the first-person shooter game Destiny 2, which my friends and I have periodically sunk a ton of time into. 
which means, you guessed it, we make a ton of dumb jokes about it. One of these god-awful memes I've made is about one of the game's rare guns known as Jotun, which is this dumpy little toaster that fits on your hand and incinerates whoever it's pointed at. To which my response was this picture. In this world, it's either yeet or be Jotun. Just prime Gen Z humor right there. Alright, that's all fun and games, but who's ready to see some disgusting face swaps? I'm not, but here we go anyway. So just as a primer, let's start off with the ones that aren't so bad. How about the one that started it all? Samos. Alright, funny story. This entire project started with when my friend Ethan, who you'll see later, was typing a group chat that he and my friends Isaac, Sam, Chris, and I were in. He tried to type, Thanks Sam, very cool. But by some divine mistake, it came out, Thanos Sam, very cool. Isaac then texts me a moment later saying, Hey, can you Photoshop Sam's face onto Thanos? Yeah. And so I did. True story. Anyway, so here's Samos, which worked frighteningly well. What also worked incredibly well was my buddy Luke as Doctor Strange, or El Doctor Extraño. This was due to the fact that that year, for yearbook pictures, he had managed to shave his goatee to look exactly like Doctor Strange's. Thanks for making my job easy, Luke. As an honorable mention, we have my roommate Isaac as Loki. Not too much to say here, it worked really well and I didn't really have any troubles with it. But this, this here is my magnum opus. The work I am most proud of, and the one that I put most effort into. Captain USSR. To give a bit of context, we have a running joke in our friend group where our friend Zach is a communist. Disclaimer, he's not. And so I used 110% of my learned skills to create this red and gold hero out of Captain America worthy of defending the motherland. So now that I've showed you all the semi-good edits, it's time for the other ones. <laughs> Not much to say here. Either the faces just didn't come out right, or I couldn't figure out how to Photoshop glasses. This one I didn't even export out of a Photoshop document until today, almost two years later, because I knew there was no saving it. I had a lot more friends that I planned to add to this collection that just never happened, because uh, it started to feel like my Photoshop magic was deteriorating, and it was. But now I've returned to craft one last creation. A final hurrah as an homage to my strange looking Avenger children. And here it is. So this ended up being less of a joke and more of an actual tribute to the times my friends and I have had together. I wanted to make it more of a funny series of pictures spliced together that would look like an actual picture we'd take together. I asked all the people I wanted to put in here to send me pictures of them in funky poses, something you might actually see on a movie poster. Uh, and though the lighting and image quality differed depending on what I was sent, I think I did pretty well, all things considered. This is obviously supposed to be based on the actual Avengers Endgame poster, but it kind of turned into my own thing once I really got working on it. And yeah, I'm aware that none of us are in superhero costumes or anything. Again, with the quarantine in place right now, I'm missing my actual friends more than the exaggerated personalities I would normally edit in there. So this is meant to be more of a family photo sort of thing. So there you have it. I've confided in you my crimes against humanity, and we are united in the bond of cursed knowledge. We've approached the base of this Mount Everest of cringe with some of my art, and foolishly we thought, yeah, I could climb that. Along our trek to the top, we saw the rare wildlife that are my inside jokes and niche memes, and discovered the breathtaking sight that is my Avengers edits at the summit. Finally, we took a picture to remember it by with my Avengers friend game homage. So what else can I say except you're welcome? I'm probably going to keep making these in the future, so look forward to volume 2. Also, originally when I wrote this, I was going to throw my Instagram in here at the end so the other people in class could slide into my DMs, but now that we're quarantined, the only person from this class that'll be seeing this is my professor, so that joke is a big no-no. Thank you, have a fantastic day, and wash your hands.